कर रहे हैं रिसर्च पर्सन कुर्सी सर आपका कुर्सी बहुत बढ़िया है Good afternoon, everyone. Now we are going to start our second session, that is practical session. I like to request our respected uh, research person, Dr. Uh, Ro Rohan Mesram sir, to start the session. Thank you, sir. Sir, your mic is muted. Oh, is my screen visible now? Yes, sir. Okay. So let us uh, pick on where we have left, right? So uh, we we begin our discussion. Okay, like. Uh, Uh, from where is that you obtain uh, the uh, structural data and how uh, from using crystallography how is that you generate that structural data right we we have solved this thing right as to from where and how structural data in pdb obtains right uh, we also learn how do we download the model from pdb right then uh, on what basis do we judge the quality of pdb model right Uh, we have defined uh, two parameters like resolution and r value okay yeah. so uh, what is that we have done with uh, resolution the value for resolution should be low if the value is low that means the structure has been resolved at higher levels okay yeah. and r value that correspond to uh that correspond to the fact as to how uh, how well your uh, your model fits the uh, electron density map so based on these two factors you can decides ki out of if there are multiple uh, structures of the uh, same protein molecule how, uh, which one is that uh, it is needed to be selected right then uh, we begin uh, exploring the pdb glad file format okay so in this i kind of uh, begin with uh, showing you the uh, crystallographically solved model uh, how is that you visualize it using softwares like spdbv okay and uh, we also simultaneously open the same file into any text editor like textpad or notepad and then we try to correlate like uh, what information is readed from your uh, pdb file so that you can visualize it in any visualizer okay uh, then uh, we uh, talked about a lot of uh, questions like why is that uh, we don't see any hydrogen atoms in uh, the models that are solved using x ray crystallography we also talked about uh, occupancy we also talked about uh, b factor right uh, and and all those things were kind of discussed in pdb 
फ्लैट फाइल फॉर्मेट ओके सो पीडीबी फ्लैट फाइल फॉर्मेट यू नो इट इज जस्ट अ कन्वेंशन Uh, that is used for uh, representing the structural data of any crystallographically or any experimentally sort structure okay so being said that uh, if the structure is solved using x-ray crystallography then of course you won't find any hydrogen then how is that we detect if the hydrogens are there or how how are the positions of hydrogens are to be determined ठीक है सो द आंसर इज क्वाइट रियली स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड कि वेन इट कम्स टू डेटर माइनिंग और वेन इट कम्स टू इन्फरिंग द पोजिशन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन आइटम यू आर सपोज टू इन्फर इट इन इन रेफरेंस टू यूर हेवी आइटम लाइक कार्बन एंड हाइड्रोजन इट इज गोइंग टू बी प्रेजेंस ऑफ एन इयर बाय दैट इज वॉट इट इज ओके ठीक है uh so uh, we are done with this thing now let us start out some uh, doing some interesting thing right we have done with this pdb flat file format as well so now let us start out with elementary visualization of proteins okay so uh, we will uh, do some really really simple things okay so uh, now do you people know as to proteins when they fold right they fold at different level there are levels of protein structure folding okay uh, do everyone agree with me there are levels of protein structure how many levels of protein structures are there kitne levels hote hai protein protein jab fold hota hai yes you can comment or you can even talk how many structural levels protein have protein can have primary structural level okay what is primary structure of a protein this is you know very basic biochemistry you don't need to know by informatics okay you might have uh, learned it in your msc and phd maybe right so uh, proteins amino acid residue sequence that correspond to your uh, that correspond to your uh, proteins primary structure okay then this uh, proteins primary structure uh, folds up into something called as protein secondary structure so what is protein secondary structure yes do you know what are protein secondary structures what are components of protein secondary structure the thing is that the primary structure uh, that is the uh, polypeptide of uh, amino acid residue linked to each other via peptide bond when it is formed on the ribosome it starts to its local small region starts to fold into very specific kind of structures what we call it as secondary structures and the secondary structure basically includes uh, three major categories okay we call it as alpha helices we call it as beta strands okay and there are turns and then there are coil coils you people might be already aware of it okay so uh, alpha helical structures are you know they will uh, they are present in helical shape right then uh, you have got beta strand which are not helical but uh, those are more extended you can say right and uh, these extended form of structures are called as beta strands well now beta strand can come uh, together and form something called as beta sheet okay so basically secondary structural elements are called as beta strand some people also call beta sheet as super secondary structural level organization okay why because there are multiple uh, structural elements that come together and form something called as beta sheet okay so uh, multiple strands can come together they can form hydrogen bonding and they can uh, form beta sheets as such okay so uh, this uh, uh, we have got uh, secondary structural elements like alpha helices we have got beta sheets 
uh, we have got turns we have got coil coils and so on and so forth. well now let us try to uh, is, is it possible to uh, visualize the secondary structural elements in the three dimension okay so yes of course it is quite really possible and we would try to explore the properties of these secondary structural elements in more details in the next or upcoming section you can say okay so let us try and explore our protein structures protein structure now. okay so let us begin with our simple software spdbv right and uh, in this afternoon session okay let us load our protein over here okay so what you see is uh, something called as this protein structure of course uh, they can be uh, you know represented in various form the form that we have been uh, discussing or the form that i have been showing you for a while it is called as line representation so aap ye jo dekh rahe the it is called as line representation there is another form uh, what we can call it as uh, stick representation okay so you can uh, Uh, display and if you render in solid 3d uh, this is called as something called as a stick representation okay another way around is that you can represent the secondary structural element directly by cartoon or ribbon representation right so uh, you can uh, select everything over here and then show it in ribbon representation okay so uh, this is something called as the same protein but in different uh, representation called as the ribbon representation so now in this ribbon representation you can uh, see a lot of secondary structural elements you can see that uh, there are uh, alpha helices there are beta sheets there are turns and there are coils right so uh, this helical shaped uh, local secondary structures are called as alpha helices these are called as helices okay and these more extended form of secondary structural elements are called as beta strands this is what we call it as a beta strand and this beta multiple beta strand when they come together this is beta strand 1 beta strand 2 beta strand 3 they collectively form something called as a beta sheet okay so this beta sheet now consists of three strand right so now you have got turn over here that uh, connect to uh, beta strands okay so this much portion is called as turn okay now there are irregularly shaped second uh, secondary structural elements like you can see this particular i hope my cursor is visible to everyone mera cursor dikh raha hai sab logo ko i hope it is visible so uh, this particular element which cannot be either classified as an alpha helix or it cannot be classified as a uh, you know typical beta strand or a beta sheet or even a turn and uh, such a type of uh, say, uh, such a type of structural elements constitute to what we call it as loops or coiled coils right so they don't have any kind of regular secondary structural uh, arrangements like beta sheets and uh, alpha helices alpha helices and beta sheets as such okay so in this way you can uh, visualize your protein molecule into say uh, different secondary structural elements that are local in nature okay so uh, local means what from uh, this stretch to this stretch there is a small stretch of amino acid residue that acquires a specific three dimensional arrangement what we call it as an alpha helix so this is a local thing therefore uh, secondary structural elements are always called as local right okay so now uh, the thing is uh, i have now told you as to what are alpha helices beta sheets and strands okay now let us uh, try to deeply uh, study is secondary structural elements so now how is that uh, you can study the secondary structural elements okay well now let us uh, try and uh, uh, try understand the differences between the secondary structural elements 
Okay. So how is that your alpha helices will differ from beta sheet? Koi batayega mujhe? Anyone want to discuss this thing? Ki bhai, what is the basic difference between an alpha helix, alpha helix and a beta sheet? No. Okay. Well, uh, let me first uh, show you so that uh, things might become more clear in this sense. Um, okay. So this is an alpha. Uh, this is the secondary, or you can say the overall tertiary structure of your protein. Okay. So uh, well, let us also define what are tertiary structures, right? So when this individual secondary structural element. Fold upon each other and forms a specific dimensional fold. We call it as the tertiary structural level. Okay, so what you are viewing right now is the tertiary structural level organization of lysozyme, which contains numerous uh, spatially arranged uh, two-dimensional structural elements like the alpha helices and beta sheets. That is that is uh, what it means, right? So now let us uh, try to kind of uh, study this uh, secondary structural elements in more detail. Well, now how is that? Let us focus on any one of the alpha helices that are present. Okay. So now how is that we can select a single helix, right? So uh, in order to select that single helix, you can use this control panel. Okay. And in this control panel, over here in this column, you can see that uh, uh, the secondary structural elements are mapped to the list of amino acid residues. We'll say, for example, lysine 1, valine 2, and phenylalanine 3 forms the first beta strand. Then arginine 5 and histidine 15 from residue arginine 5 till residue histidine 15 it forms something called as a helix, which is mapped by HHH over here. So this, this indicates that this is uh, from RG95 till histidine 15, it forms an a helix. So let us now focus. So what you can do is that now you can click on this H. So when you click on this H, that means you are trying to select all the residues that are present in this particular helix that ranges from residue number 5 till residue number 15. It starts out with RG95 and it ends with histidine 15. Well, now you might have noted uh, one thing that although I have selected this helix, but still the entire molecule is still on display. Right? I have selected this helix so it might uh, appear to you that only helix might have been show, uh, must have been uh, uh, been there on display but that is not the case but look in this software in this spdb it is not necessary that whatever you selected will be displayed and whatever you displayed will be selected right so there is difference you can have control over uh, what things you are you are selecting in your model and what things out of selected that you want to display. Okay. So in this case, as you can see, that the, the residues from RG95 till histidine 15 have turned red. That means these residues are selected. These are these residues are selected as well as these residues are displayed. Right. So now what you can do is that you can only focus on these residues and you can hide some another residues by clicking simply on this show button. Right. So now what we have done, we have the remaining amino acid residues and we are now focusing on only the helix that uh, correspond to RG95 till RG915. So this is the helix. Okay. Well, now let us zoom center it so that uh, we can visualize it in more details. Okay. Now the clear helical sense, uh, you know, will not really uh, be very evident in this case. For that, what we can do is that let us try to remove the side chains so that things will become more clear. Okay. Now, how is that we remove the side chains? 
okay so what you can do is that you can right click in this side column okay so this show column over here will show backbone the side column will show all the side chains this label column will show the labels as such okay so let us try to right click over here so that uh, we would uh, remove the display of the side chains of the helix as such okay so now you can see that this is the backbone right and one thing that you can note in this backbone is that all uh, all the carbonyls are oriented in a same direction you see this thing all the carbonyls in the helix are oriented in the same direction right and this will have a greater uh, you know significance as i'm going to demonstrate you in a while okay so what is that you can see that uh, this is an alpha helix now if you rotate this alpha helix you can clearly see that it is uh, it, it is having some helical shapes right so if you try to uh, see it like this you can see that uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a circular hole in between okay so it is clearly visible that this, this is an alpha helix you can also see uh, the same alpha helix in ribbon representation right now it is quite really very clear that this is an alpha helix okay now if you want to undisplay you all you have to do is to simply click on this minus button that that will uh, let the ribbon representation go away right okay so now let us try to label this residue right so how many uh, how many residues are there let us try to label those by adding the label all you have to do is to click on this label column right so now you can you can see that you are you have got cysteine then you have got this uh, glutamate then leucine alanine 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 thionine then you have got this lysine arginine and histidine so these are the amino acid residues that are currently being displayed and that are currently being uh, selected okay yahan tak kiya sab logo ne if you are trying to do this thing are there any issues on your end if you are trying to do things no if there are any issues please let me know so that i can sort it out or i can help you if there are any okay ठीक है Okay, let us focus on this single one. Okay, so this is an alpha helix. Okay, now let us try to understand the hydrogen bonding pattern and analyze the hydrogen bonding pattern in this alpha helices. And based on this uh, hydrogen bonding pattern, you can classify these alpha helices. And how is that? It is going to happen. I will just let you know. Okay, so. Uh, in order to display what are the hydrogen bonding patterns or what are the hydrogen bonds okay so uh, you can uh, go to this tools and then use this uh, option called as compute hydrogen bonds okay kya karna hai apne ko you are supposed to uh, show the alpha helix that ranges from rg95 to histidine 15 okay simply by clicking on this edge over here it would turn this uh, this much segment of your protein into red okay and you are supposed to click on this show button so that only those amino acid residues would be shown everything other every other amino acid residue that might be on display would go away okay and then click on this minus sign in this side column so that you would remove all the side chains from the display 
okay and you might end up uh, like this and then you can label it okay so this is what uh, we have done basically okay so now we know ki uh, what are the amino acid residues okay so now uh, let us try to visualize the hydrogen bond that are present in this uh, in this particular alpha helix okay for that let us go to these tools and then use this option called as compute hydrogen bonds okay so doing this thing in a blink of an eye what happens you can visualize what are the possible hydrogen bonds that might exist between these amino acid residues in your alpha helix okay the green colored uh, dotted lines that might appear those would correspond to your hydrogen bonds okay now let us try to find out some pattern in this hydrogen bonding uh, that is uh, that is present on display over here okay now if you visualize this thing really really very carefully you might identify that there is a specific pattern well say for example this carbonyl carbon of rg95 right this is the carbonyl carbon or carbonyl oxygen atom of rg95 it forms hydrogen bond with the with the nitrogen of alanine 9 5 forms hydrogen bond with 9 also it can form hydrogen bond with 7 glutamate 7 right the hydrogen bond that originate from the carbonyl oxygen of rg95 is donated to the backbone of glutamate 7 okay so now how is that i make sure that this atom is from glutamate 7 you can simply click it or you can simply okay so this is from leucine 8 sorry not from 7 but 8 okay so uh, the thing is that when you uh, and display this leucine 8 this hydrogen bond goes away this particular hydrogen bond well that means this rg95 the oxygen atom from the backbone of rg95 forms hydrogen bond with the nitrogen of leucine 8 see this is blue colored blue colored one is nitrogen so hydrogen bond exists between residue number 5 and residue number 8 well let us note it down so that things would become more clear what was the first hydrogen bond that we have noted the fifth residue form hydrogen bond with eighth well now let us see what sixth residue form hydrogen bond okay so now sixth residue is 16 sixteen residue of course will form hydrogen bond with ninth residue something called as alanine 9 so if you kind of uh, let, let me bring it to this hydrogen bond i am talking about if you remove this alanine okay so this hydrogen bond would be removed right so the thing is that your cysteine at six position forms the hydrogen bond with alanine at ninth position so six will form hydrogen bond with ninth right again let us move one amino acid residue further let us try to see seventh residue if it uh, forms with uh, tenth Where is the seventh residue now? This is the seventh residue. Seventh residues. Now we need to focus on the carbonyl oxygen atom of this glutamate seven. This is the carbonyl oxygen, and it should uh, form hydrogen bond with tenth. Do you see? Okay. 
yes this is glutamate 7 sorry okay and it forms hydrogen bond with 10 right so seventh residue forms with 10 now what is the pattern now if you consider this particular uh, the number from this particular column as i then you can find that this i th amino acid residue is forming hydrogen bond with i to i plus 5 6 7 8 i to i plus third you get this thing if you consider this column as i then the hydrogen bonding partner would be i i to i plus 3 so such a type of hydrogen bonding is called as i to i plus 3 type of hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding can also exist like i to i plus 2 type of hydrogen bond so uh, helices can thus be considered as i to i plus 3 type of helix or i to i plus 2 type of helix depending on what is the hydrogen bonding pattern that is present in your helix okay have i made myself clear in this thing ki alpha helices ke prakar kaise kya reh sakte depending on what is the hydrogen bonding pattern that is present between the amino acid residues right if the hydrogen bonding happens between first and third it would be called as i to i plus 2 if the hydrogen bonding happens between first and fourth the type of hydrogen uh, the type of helix would be called as i to i plus 3 type of helix okay so there are different type of alpha helices that can be defined based on uh, what are the hydrogen bonding partners that are present in your secondary structural elements. Okay. One more thing that you should note from uh, this particular secondary structural organization is that all the hydrogen bonding that happens in alpha helices, you can classify them as you can classify all the hydrogen bonding as intra hydrogen bonding so hydrogen bonding you can say is intra in case of alpha helices right why do we call it as intra because you know hydrogen uh, hydrogen bonding happens within the amino acid residues that are present in this secondary structure right rg9 forms hydrogen bond rg95 forms hydrogen bond with 8th residue leucine 8 but this 5 and 8 they both are present in the same secondary structural element therefore we call it as intra right so hydrogen bonding is always intra type in alpha helices okay you get this thing why do we call it as intra hydrogen bonding why? Because uh, all the hydrogen bonding partners would be present in the same secondary structural element. And therefore, the hydrogen bonding is called as intra-hydrogen bonding when it comes to alpha helices. Okay. So, what is the question here? Do you guys, uh, are you guys comfortable with this thing? Okay, How is that we classified alpha helices? Right? We have classified these alpha helices based on what is the hydrogen bonding pattern between the partners. Right? And second most important thing that you, you might have addressed over here is that all the hydrogen bonding partners in alpha helices are present in the same helix. They are present in the same secondary structure element and therefore we call it as intra. Right? If the hydrogen bonding happened between first and third amino acid residue, we call such a type of helix as I2, I plus 2 type of helix. And if hydrogen bonding uh, happens between the first and uh, third amino uh, first and third we call it as i2 i plus 3 okay you have got i2 i plus 2 you have got i2 i plus 3 type of 
a hydrogen bonding SSH. Okay, so now let us compare this thing with another structural element. Okay, so this is alpha helix. Ka. Alpha helix ki main property kya bataya maine? Alpha helix ki main property ye hai ki hydrogen bonding hamesha kya rahengi usme? Intra rahengi. That means all the hydrogen bonding partners will be present in the same helix. Dusri cheej, they are in unidirection, right? They would happen in the same direction. As you can see that all the hydrogen bonding happens in the same direction, this direction. Ye ek hi direction mein iska hydrogen bonding pattern ho Right? And based on the partners, you can have I2 I plus 3 or I2 I plus 2 type of LSS. These things are uh, the ones that I want to bring you into the focus. Okay, I hope I am clear with this thing now. Okay, so now let us compare. Let us keep it as it is, right? And uh, let us open the same uh, molecule. And try to visualize. Yes, we are done with helix. Now let us try and visualize the beta sheets, right? So uh, how is that we show a beta sheet in this thing now? Okay, well, you can go to this select and from the select, uh, select option, you can select the secondary structure and you can select this strand. Okay, it will give you, uh, this, this software gives you a variety of option for selection. Okay, so I have, sh I have shown you one method in which you can either select helix by clicking on this edge. But now we want to select entire uh, beta sheet. Okay, we don't want to select a single strand, right? We want to select entire beta sheet. So we will go to this tool, sorry, uh, to this select option and then uh, you would select the secondary structure and then you would select strands. So in this way, if you click on this strand, all the strands will be selected. Do you get this thing? We have selected all the strands that are present in your alpha helix, uh, in your uh, tertiary structure, right? So jitne bhi S, S hai, these S stand for strands, right? So now let us show these strands, okay? Well, of course, we don't need side chains. So let us remove the side chains. Okay. Now you can see that there are two beta sheets. Right? You can show it in ribbons. Right? So beta sheets There are two beta sheets. One beta sheet is formed by these three strands, and another beta sheet is formed by these two strands. So, how many beta sheets are there? are two beta sheets that are formed by five beta strands. This is how uh, you would express yourself. How do you talk about it? You will tell us that there are two beta sheets in your structure. In the first beta sheet, there are three strands. And in the second beta sheet, there are two strands. Right? Okay. So now, depending on the directionality of the uh, strands, you can have three type of uh, beta strands as such. Well, chalo, iske mein bhi baat karte hai. Now, how is that you define the directionality? The directionality is shown by an arrow over here, as you can see, right? You can see an arrow. This arrow would indicate as to in what direction your, uh, your uh, polypeptide chain is moving from N terminus to C terminus. Right. So th this is the directionality. And based on directionality of the individual strand, you can classify your beta sheets into three type of beta sheets. So what if all the strands in your beta sheet are directed towards, are in the same direction? We call such a type of a beta sheet as parallel beta sheet, right? 
it might happen that one strand goes towards c terminus right so one strand goes towards c terminus and the next strand in your beta sheet can go to n terminus right subsequent strand can again come back into the opposite direction if such is the case we call it as anti parallel beta sheet and sometime it it might possible that few of the strands are oriented in one direction few of the strands are oriented in another direction so such a type of sheets are also called as mixed beta sheets okay so depending on the directionality now you can classify your beta sheets into three types parallel if they are if all the strands in your beta sheets lie in the same directionality then you can call them as parallel beta sheet if they are in anti parallel uh, if they uh, if they are oriented in anti parallel fashion then you can call such a beta sheet as anti parallel beta sheet and if there is no regular pattern then you can call it as mixed beta sheet so now based on uh, this knowledge can you just visualize at tell me this sheet if it is parallel or anti parallel just a minute hello ha ha लेक्चर मध्य आहो मैं तू चार पांच वजता कॉल कर ओके सो बेस्ड ऑन दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन वी आर डिस्कसिंग लाइक द डायरेक्शनलिटी ऑफ द स्ट्रेंड्स दैट आर प्रेजेंट इन योर बीटा शीट कैन यू क्लासिफाय दिस बीटा शीट दिस बीटा शीट दैट दैट हेज गॉट दिस थ्री स्ट्रेंड यू कैन राइट इट इन द चैट बॉक्स ओके आई विल आई वुड जस्ट रोटेट इट what type of beta sheet is this it is parallel anti parallel or what what is that you see kya hai parallel hai anti parallel hai mixed hai janaran ji Uh, says that this is mixed parallel it it can be either mixed or it can be either parallel fir se ek bar batata hu aapko main so that things might become clear the first strand goes in this direction another the next strand in your beta sheet goes in opposite direction and the subsequent strand again turn it direction into up its opposite direction so i think this is clearly a uh, एंटी पैरल बीटा शीट राइट ये क्या है दिस इज एंटी पैरल वन स्टैंड गोज दिस वे अनादर स्टैंड गोज इन अपोजिट डायरेक्शन एंड द सब्सिक्वेंट स्टैंड अगेन टर्न्स एंड गो बैक इन अपोजिट डायरेक्शन राइट सो दिस इज अ टिपिकल एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एंटी पैरल यहां पर क्या दिख रहा है आपको दिस इज ऑल्सो एंटी पैरल वन स्टैंड गोज इन दिस डायरेक्शन एंड अनादर स्टैंड गोज इन कंप्लीटली अपोजिट डायरेक्शन राइट सो what you can say now in this case is that you have got two beta sheets that are formed of five beta strands and both the beta sheets are of anti parallel type right barabar hai i mean this is how uh, you should uh, a kind of uh, view or you, you you should interpret your secondary structural elements in your protein okay so now ye ho gaya types of uh, beta sheet helices ko kaise ke define kiya tha apan ne on the basis of the hydrogen bonding partner right if it is i2 i plus 2 type i2 i plus 3 type yahan par kaise ke define karenge apan type of uh, beta uh, beta sheets on the basis of if the strands are parallel or anti parallel in nature okay well now let us focus on the hydrogen bonding pattern right okay so the hydrogen bonding pattern in case of alpha helices 
was intra that means whatever hydrogen bonding partners will be there in alpha helices they would be from the same secondary structural elements as you can see over here now let us try to see the hydrogen bonding pattern that might happen in case of these beta sheets okay for that we would also go to these tools and compute hydrogen bond well now you can clearly see the difference between the hydrogen bonding you can see that the hydrogen bonding is inter strand right hydrogen bond from one strand iska partner dusre strand mein hai right yahan par kya tha the hydrogen bonding partner was present in the same helix yahan par hydrogen bonding partner is present in different strand this is one strand this is another strand do you notice the difference बरोबर है सो दैट इज वाई वी से दैट इन केस ऑफ बीटा शीट्स और इन केस ऑफ यू कैन से स्ट्रेंड द हाइड्रोजन बॉन्डिंग पैटर्न इज इंटर हाइड्रोजन बॉन्डिंग इज इंट्रा when it comes to helices while hydrogen bonding pattern is inter when it comes to beta sheets and this is where my friend basically at biochemical level these two secondary structural elements differ from each other in terms of hydrogen bonding so now i hope it is clear that uh, uh, you know the very hydrogen bonding uh, nature might differentiate your secondary structural elements so it is such a type of hydrogen bonding that would give rise to specific secondary structural elements so agar aisa hydrogen bonding pattern nahi raha to aapka alpha helix kabhi stable nahi rahega right if intra hydrogen bonding pattern is not present between the strands your beta sheet will never get stabilized so differential hydrogen bonding pattern is one of the most dominating factor that stabilizes your protein structure structural level okay or you can say it is the most important stabilizing factor the pattern is the most important stabilizing factor when it comes to stabilizing your uh, protein three dimensional structure as such okay so i hope now you are uh, well uh, with uh, the secondary structure okay so now we have done with this thing like uh, we have completed this task of visualization of secondary structures okay so now let us move on to polar and non polar distribution okay yahan tak kisi ko kuch puchna hai सहमत भाई ओके ठीक है सो नाउ विल लेट मी क्लोज दिस थिंग तो अभी एक और बात बताओ मुझे how many types of or how many classes of amino acid residues are there in proteins okay proteins mein kitne type ke amino acid residues hote hain can you name a few name of you kitne hote i will tell you there are polar amino acid residue 
there are acidic amino acid residue there are basic amino acid residue right and there are non polar amino acid residue or bare non polar amino acid residue kon se kon se reh sakte it can be valine it can be leucine it can be isoleucine how many basic amino acid residues are there there are basic amino acid residues like lysine arginine even little bit histidine jo mildly basic hota hai right acidic kon se kon se hote hai aspartate and glutamate right and there are acid amides like aspartame and glutamine theek hai uh, we have already talked about non polar like valine leucine isoleucine right so these are all classes of amino acid residues बरबर है सो वेल दीज अमाइनो एसिड रेसिड्यूज आर क्लासिफाइड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द साइड चेन द नेचर ऑफ साइड चेन राइट दैट इज व्हाट वी नो बरबर है टेल मी इफ आई एम रॉन्ग बरबर है ना एम आई ओके बरबर बात कर रहा हूं ना मैं गुड सो द थिंग इज नाउ यू माइट हैव आल्सो नो कि भाई proteins are present in aqueous solution right when when they are present in cell they are always surrounded with water do you agree with me proteins when they are present in cell most of the time they are uh, cytosolic protein if we are talking most of the time they are surrounded by water barobar hai na so now tell me one thing uh, if that is the case then uh, uh, non polar amino acid residue bhi hai apan aisa bol rahe hain apne protein mein and uh, how is that this protein might be thermodynamically stable if it has got non polar amino acid residues and it is exposed to water molecule the protein uh, will not be thermodynamically stable in tt then or why why because non polar chemical components or non polar species have got tendency to avoid contact with water and our protein molecule in itself is supposed to be present in water right barobar hai na do you uh, i mean uh, are you able to visualize what is the problem that i am i am trying to address i said that our protein molecule contains non polar polar acidic basic type of amino acid residue that means it contains non polar amino acid residues barobar hai and our protein is supposed to remain in aqueous solution throughout its life when it present in cell then how is that this protein system a uh, thermodynamically stable system if it has got uh, hydrophobic or non polar uh, components and uh, it is supposed to get exposed to water then how these things are managed in cells that is what i want to ask is koi batana chahenga students mein se if there are phd students how is that nature has solved this thing and why is that uh, it might want to have non polar uh, patches in its protein when it is uh, supposed to be present in aqueous environment all the time right so the thing is that proteins are known to be the most stable entities that are present in biochemical system then how is that nature has solved this problem कि भाई नॉन पोलर अमाइनो एसिड रेसिड्यू को अपने प्रोटीन में रखते हुए अपने को अपना सिस्टम भी स्टेबल रखना है दैट दैट प्रोटीन सिस्टम शुड आल्सो रिमेन स्टेबल सो दिस थिंग्स समहाउ हैज बीन मैनेज्ड बाय नेचर बाय फोल्डिंग द प्रोटीन ठीक है तो प्रोटीन ऐसा व्हेन इट स्टार्ट्स टू यू नो व्हेन इट इज सिंथेसाइज इट इट फोल्ड्स इटसेल्फ इनटू अ स्पेसिफिक थ्री डायमेंशनल स्ट्रक्चर इट एक्वायर्स टर्शरी स्ट्रक्चर एट लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड व्हाइल इट फोल्ड्स इट फोल्ड्स इन सच अ वे दैट ऑल नॉन पोलर अमाइनो एसिड रेसिड्यू साइड चेन दे आर बरीड टुवर्ड्स द इंटीरियर ऑफ प्रोटीन एंड ऑल द पोलर and uh, you can say charged amino acid residue they are supposed to be exposed to solvent right 
so why is that uh, uh, why is that uh, protein want might have uh, nature might have wanted to do such a thing first to maintain the thermodynamic stability of your protein system by uh, by burying all the non polar amino acid towards the core of your protein nature had made sure uh, that the uh, the non polar amino acid uh, residues would remain away from the polar or you can say the aqueous environment uske aaj baju mein right and in order to uh, get your protein solubilized in the aqueous environment or in the cytosol it must form a lot of hydrogen bonds with the existing uh, water molecule around itself theek hai so by turning the polar side chains and you can say the uh, and you can say the charge side chain on the surface of your protein it can then form hydrogen bonds and thus your protein can become more soluble right so uh, this is how nature has solved this problem and somehow uh, can we visualize this thing now yes of course we can do that theek hai to chalo let us try to do a kind of exercise in which we would try to see if such things indeed happen in proteins or not when they get coated okay theek hai so let us again get back to my favorite molecule okay so let us now create a kind of representation and for this representation Okay, we would play around with the side chains, right? So, for time being, what I will do is that I would remove all the side chains. Okay, and let us focus only on the backbone. Okay, so now you can see that I have uh, removed or I have hided all the side chains. Okay, so now to bring a proper color contrast. well let us try to color only the backbone of our protein by say brown color okay okay kya karte hain apan we would color the backbone of our protein by brown color okay now this particular triangle over here if you click you you have uh, you know uh, you have ability to select ki kya color hona chahiye right so by default backbone and side chain is selected that means whatever coloring scheme you would apply that would apply both on backbone and side chain but you can change it to backbone right so that uh, now you can see that it has the the letter over here has changed to b initially it was bs you see here initially it was bs that indicate whatever coloring that will happen that will happen on both backbone and side chain but now our requirement is that we need to color only backbone okay why why do we want to color only backbone because we want to create some coloring contrast later on jo aapko bhi pata chalega thodi der baad theek hai so let us change the coloring scheme and re and retain the coloring to only backbone atoms okay so now this b indicate that whatever you will color that could uh, only color the backbone okay so now for coloring the entire backbone we need to select the entire backbone by selecting on this chain a or simply clicking on this a group in this chain you would select the entire protein all the residues are selected now right so now if you want to color the backbone go to this color option color option maybe लथा चंद्रन यस Latha, uh, do you have any uh, anything to share? Because I see you are you have raised your hand. Hello. 
okay let, let me move forward uh, you were not uh, really audible you can maybe write it into the comment box so that we can i can read it you can write it in chat box okay so what were we doing uh, we were trying to create a model a representation of our model wherein uh, we have uh, you know colored our backbone by this uh, look uh, this brown color okay now what i will do i want to color the side chains okay so now i have changed from backbone to side chain okay so s appeared over here that would indicate ki now whatever uh, coloring that would happen that would only happen on the side chain okay so now let us select non polar side chain first okay select to select only non polar side chain how would we proceed we would go to this select then uh, select group property and select non polar so in this way now you can see that all the non polar amino acid residues are selected right you can see now valine has turned red phenylalanine has turned red glycine has turned red alanine has turned red methionine has turned red almost all non polar amino acid residues have turned red now okay now let us display only the non polar amino acid residues what you can do is that you can click on this side column okay so now you can see that only the non polar amino acid residues are on display we we have shown the backbone of the entire protein but the side chains of only non polar amino acid residues are on display okay so now let us color whatever we have selected by type if we color by type right so now you can see if we what did i do i i went to this color and selected by type so if you do so all the non polar amino acid residue side chains would be colored in gray color all the positively charged amino acid residue side chain would be colored by blue color and all the acidic one would be colored by red color but since only the non polar amino acid residues are on display isliye yahan par sirf non polar amino acid so now in this representation what is that you observe you can observe that uh, we are showing the entire backbone backbone of your entire protein and we have shown only the side chains of non polar amino acid residue that are colored in gray color okay so now what i want you to do is that i want you to observe that most of the amino acid residue that are non polar in nature their side chains are always oriented towards the center of your protein they are oriented towards the core of your protein you can see that none of the uh, non polar side chain is pointing towards the cytosolic side or it is pointing away from the protein can you note that ye cheez observe ki kya aap logo ne ki yahan se aisa bahar koi dikh raha hai kya aapko koi nikle wala that would expose themselves to water no most of the amino acid residue side chain will they are exposed or they are oriented towards the core of your protein towards the interior of your protein in this way when the protein fold it make sure that whatever non polar amino acid residues are there they would avoid contact with water molecule by orienting themselves towards the core of your protein and hence your protein system is thermodynamically really very stable dikh raha hai okay everyone agrees with this thing okay now let us do another exercise instead of selecting only the uh, non polar let us see what is the distribution of uh, of acidic and basic amino acid residues 
right what we are what we have noted now for time being is that all non polar amino acid residues are always <clears throat> oriented towards the core of the protein now let us try to see if opposite is the case in uh, in case of your basic and acidic amino acid residue or polar amino amino acid residue okay uske liye apne ko kya karna padega we would have to create another representation right to yahan par kya note karna hai aapko कि सारे के सारे नॉन पोलर साइड चेंज जो है जो यहाँ पर आपको यहाँ पर आपको ग्रे कलर में दिख रहे हैं सेंटर ऑफ योर प्रोटीन नन ऑफ द साइड चेन इज एक्सपोज आउटसाइड राइट सो नाउ लेट अस सी इफ दैट इज द केस इन केस ऑफ योर एसिडिक एंड बेसिक एसिड एसिड ओके तो उसके लिए अपन क्या करेंगे नाउ लेट अस सिलेक्ट ओनली एसिडिक एंड basic amino acid residue right so for that what we will do is that we would go to this select option then again select group property and when i select when i select this basic you would note that whatever non polar amino acid residues that are selected now that are red now the red would be the uh, you can say basic amino acid residue like this lysine and arginine would become red right That means they would be selected. Now you now you can see that we have selected all basic. Also, we can add to our selection all the acidic amino acid residues as well. So, for that, you have to do what? You have to select the control button from your keyboard. If you select the control button, then go to this uh, select option. Then if you select the control button, then go to this select and again group kind. Uh, sorry group property and acid so now you can see that we have selected basic as well as acidic glutamate is also selected and basic arginine and lysine is also selected theek hai so now when i click this side button then all the side chains that we have selected for time being it is acidic and basic they would be on display now and you would note a very strong contrast in this case contrast kya rehne wala hai ki sare ke sare acidic aur basic ek bhi andar ki side mein oriented nahi rahega sare ke sare uske exterior mein oriented rahenge well let us see if that is the case right abhi dekh rahe hain aap yahan par what happened now you can see that most of the एसिडिक एंड बेसिक अमाइनो एसिड रेसिड्यूज उनके जो साइड चेन्स है ये सारे के सारे एक्सपोज है वेरी फ्यू ऑफ देम आर ओरिएंटेड टूवर्ड्स द कोर ऐसा क्यों करता है प्रोटीन जस्ट इन ऑर्डर टू मेक श्योर दैट इट वुड इंटरेक्ट विथ लॉट ऑफ वॉटर मॉलिक्यूल इट कैन फॉर्म न्यूमरस हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड एंड योर प्रोटीन माइट गेट स्टेबलाइज और यू कैन से योर प्रोटीन माइट गेट सोल्यूबलाइज इन दाइटोसॉल जहां पर उसे काम करना होता है right you can you can clearly see all the side chains that are acidic and basic in our case red and blue these side chains are pointed away from the protein towards the periphery to on the surface of your protein right and that is how nature has solved the problem of thermodynamic stability okay so is there any problem <laughs> nahi theek hai so we are done with this aspect as well जेशन हो गया सेकेंडरी स्ट्रक्चर का वी आर ऑल्सो डन विथ पोलर एंड नॉन पोलर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वेल ना इफ यू हैव स्ट्रक्चर गिवन अ सिंपल स्ट्रक्चर राइट एंड आई वुड सिंपली कलर बाय सीपीके आई वुड रिवर्ट बैक टू बैक वन एंड साइड चेन एंड कलर इट अगेन बाय सीपीके सो दिस इज योर प्रोटीन नाउ Right as we begin. 
Okay. So now my question is ki if you have structure of any given protein right then uh, is it possible for you to determine is isoelectric point not not exact isoelectric point of this protein but uh, can you at least have a uh, have a you can say just brief idea ki bhai iska isoelectric point kya reh sakta hai kya ye protein acidic hai ya kya ye protein basic hai reh sakta hai kya since now i have told you ki you can select various uh, amino acid residues by various types then this information can be used to address such a type of question ki like uh, is it possible for us to know ki whether this protein is going to be basic or whether it is whether it is going to be acidic in nature you can solve this problem let me show you how you can do it right so for that you can use this select command over here right to aap kya kar sakte hain what you can do is that you can go to this select option and uh, maybe group property and select all maybe basic protein first so now you can see that yahan par selected to hai but how many basic amino acid residues are there if you want to know there is another uh, feature of this software what we call it as layer info okay to so layer info option jo hai from where do you get this layer info option go to this windows and then click on this layer info theek hai a small box would appear a dialog box would appear it will give you a fair idea it will give you a fair idea as to how many residues are selected in the current selection mode ठीक है ये जो दिख रहा है आपको 18 व्हाट वी हैव डन ओके आई विल टेल यू वंस मोर सिलेक्ट नन करते ओके सो करेंटली वी हैव सिलेक्टेड नथिंग राइट सो नाउ फर्स्ट ट्राई टू सिलेक्ट हाउ मेनी एसिडिक अमाइनो एसिड रेसिड्यूज आर देयर गो टू सिलेक्ट देन ग्रुप प्रॉपर्टी एंड सिलेक्ट लेट अस ट्राई टू सिलेक्ट बेसिक फर्स्ट ओके सो हाउ मेनी बेसिक आर देयर देयर आर 18 बेसिक अमाइनो एसिड रेसिड्यूज let us note it down now how many basic amino acid residue are there 18 all right we would do the same thing and try to see how many acidic amino acid residues are there right again go to select group property and acidic how many are there there are Nine. Again, let us note it down. So now, based on these two figures, right? The number of basic amino acid residue is, you can say, double than the number of acidic amino acid residue. So overall, what do you think would be the overall? property that would be imparted on this protein now based on this data if you compare the number of basic amino acid residue and acidic amino acid residue we have got double the basic amino acid residue as compared to acidic then what would be the overall nature of this protein will it be acidic or basic Yes, of course, it would be basic. Its ka pia. It would be basic in nature, right? So let us try to uh, kind of confirm it uh, using Google, right? Lysozyme ka is electric point kya hai? Its pH is around eleven. Eleven pH है यानी क्या? If the pH is eleven, that means it is highly basic in nature, and that is what we have confirmed over here, right? We have counted the number of amino acid residues that are basic and compared with acidic, and of course, it corroborated properly, 
right? Its pH is 11. Therefore, it is basic in nature. Okay, so this is how uh, you can uh, you can say you can incorporate basic biochemistry with bioinformatics. You can make your students' uh, uh, learning experience uh, you know more interactive, more application oriented, right? So, okay, so we are also done with this thing, right? We are done with now isoelectric point. Okay, now let us talk something really very interesting. Let us talk about hydrogen bonding. Okay, so I have kind of shown you how hydrogen bonds are to be detected, right? How is that we detect hydrogen bonds? We detect hydrogen bond by simply using this option over here. Tools and then compute hydrogen bonds. And it would it would compute all possible hydrogen bonds that are present in your protein. Okay. Well, now let us try to jump into more details of this hydrogen bonds in more details as such. Okay. And try to classify what type of different hydrogen bonds might exist in uh, there. Right. So uh, let us let us try to dive there. Okay, hydrogen bond ko abhi detail mein dekhte hai. Okay. So what we are supposed to do is that first define what hydrogen bonds are, and then maybe we would type of we would uh, kind of uh, discuss what are different types of hydrogen bonds. Okay. So who will tell me mujhe ki, uh, who will who will tell me what are hydrogen bonds? How is that we chemically define what is a hydrogen bond? Okay? Nahi batana chahate? Koi dikkat nahi. Main hu yahan par batane ke liye. So, uh, for formation of hydrogen bond, you would need two polar groups. Polar group 1 and polar group 2. By polar, I, I specifically mean chemically that there should be differences in the electronegativity between the two atoms. Then and then it can induce polarity. Okay. So we have got two polar group. Polar group 1 and polar group 2 as I have shown you over here. Right. So as you know that the electronegativity of oxygen is far more as compared to the carbon. And electronegativity of nitrogen is far more as compared to hydrogen. Well, I have specifically selected these two polar group in this illustration because uh, the CO and NH group are most abundantly found in protein by both. So that is why to keep the analogy together, uh, I have selected the CO and NH as two polar groups. Right. Okay. So now. Uh, we have got polar group 1, we have got polar group 2 and the constituent atoms are, uh, well, they differ in terms of electronegativity. One of the constituent species will have higher electronegativity as compared to the others. Well, now, if that is the case, what would happen is that the atom that is having higher electronegativity will try to attract the shared pair of electrons towards itself, right? So, in case of carbonyl group, oxygen being far more electronegative than carbon, the shared pair of electron will be shifted towards oxygen. In case of this NH group, nitrogen being far more electronegative than hydrogen, the shared pair of electron will be shifted towards nitrogen. So, now, Shifting of electron would also shift the charges that these electrons carry. Therefore, in this way, electron has got negative charge. So, shifting of electron towards your uh, oxygen atom would impart, uh, you can say, partial negative charge on your oxygen. And since the uh, since the electron were shifted away from this carbon, 
this carbon will get delta positive charge right similar will happen in case of this nh n being more electronegative atom since the electron density got shifted towards nitrogen due to the negative charges on electron this nitrogen will get delta negative charge and this hydrogen will get delta positive charge okay so now we say that our two chemical species are now polarized okay is happen kya kahenge the chemical species are now polarized so now if such two chemical species dipolar chemical species which has got uh which has got you know uh, uh which has got partial negative character on itself there is another chemical species with partial negative charge upon itself and that is shared by a hydrogen which has got partial positive charge and now if these three come into close vicinity it forms a very you can say weak and transient force of attraction or force of stabilization what we call it as hydrogen bonds okay so since the hydrogen bond since the hydrogen is given by this nh group therefore this particular polar moiety is called as a donor and since it is the hydrogen bond that is accepted by this particular chemical species we call it as donor uh, we call it as acceptor right so this is the acceptor group of hydrogen bond and this is the donor group of hydrogen bond okay so now when these two electronegative atom with partial negative charge come uh, well when 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 all or we can say let me rephrase it when a hydrogen which is having partial positive charge comes in between delta negative charges of uh, oxygen and nitrogen it forms a very transient force of stabilization called as hydrogen bond quite very simple well now let us talk about the strength of hydrogen bond well now the strength of hydrogen bond will be completely dependent on uh, the distance of these uh, two electronegative atom right if the distance is very low this oxygen and nitrogen if the distance is very low then the hydrogen bond would be very strong if you increase the distance between these two electronegative atoms then the strength of hydrogen bond would eventually decrease this is the first factor that determines the strength of your hydrogen bond the second factor that would determine the strength of hydrogen bond would be the angle between the uh, two electronegative atom which is mediated by this hydrogen okay the more you deviate the weaker will be the hydrogen bond okay if these two electronegative atoms are collinear then the hydrogen bond would be the strongest the more you deviate the hydrogen bond would go on weakening as such okay so uh, this is it uh, i mean uh, this this is what i want to tell you about the hydrogen bonds how they are formed and uh, the strength of the hydrogen bond is determined by the distance between the electronegative atom as well as the angle between the electronegative atoms okay so this this is what uh, uh, i want to focus on hydrogen bonds right okay so now let us talk about types of hydrogen bond this is something that you might not have uh, heard about okay so hydrogen bond ke bhi type hote hain theek hai and uh, these types were you know initially first discovered and discussed uh, when people started to uh, crystallize your protein with carbohydrate moieties like uh, arabinose and glucose okay and therefore such a type of hydrogen different type of hydrogen bonding were first established in this uh, protein carbohydrate complexes and therefore we usually call it as the sugar pair okay so let us not uh, let us now go on talking about what are types of hydrogen bond okay so depending on uh, depending on 
how many hydrogen bonds are donated and how many hydrogen bonds are accepted in hydrogen bonding pattern you can define three type of major three types of hydrogen bonds okay what we call it as cooperative hydrogen bonding then what we call as bidentate okay and what we call it as network okay this network involves bridging of hydrogen bond through water molecules okay we'll come to this thing in a while so let us first discuss what is cooperative hydrogen bond then we would discuss what is bidentate hydrogen bond and then we would discuss what is network of hydrogen bond and then try to kind of to visualize uh, these different type of hydrogen bonding networks in the protein molecules as such okay theek hai to let us first define what are cooperative hydrogen bonds okay so uh, as i have already mentioned that this special type of hydrogen bonding or classes of hydrogen bonds were first uh, you know illustrated in uh, protein and carbohydrate complexes you can refer this classic paper jo maine aapko niche bataya hai that that have uh, you know uh, put forth the theory of uh, types of hydrogen bond as such when it comes to protein ligand interaction or protein carbohydrate interaction right so the thing is that when it comes to cooperative or bidentate hydrogen bond it is the very chemistry of the hydroxyl group that is present in your sugar that plays a very important role okay so now let us try to understand what is the specific chemistry that is offered by this hydroxyl group from your sugar molecule theek okay. hai so the very first thing that you should know based on the hybridization state of this oxygen when it is present in sugar you can say that it is present in sp3 hybridized state this oxygen is always present in sp3 hybridized state when it comes to sugar okay so when oxygen is present in this sp3 hybridization state then it leaves a lone pair of electron right so this lone pair of electron can act as a source of acceptor of two hydrogen bond right and since this hydroxyl group has got its own hydrogen this hydrogen therefore this oh group can also act as a donor so due to its inherent you can say uh, inherent sp3 hybridization state the same hydroxyl group can act as donor and simultaneously it can act as an acceptor of two hydrogen so this specific chemistry enables your hydroxyl group to receive as well as donate hydrogen bonds it is the specific chemistry of this oh group it is the specific hybridization state of this uh, this oxygen that would uh, enable it to accept a two hydrogen bond and donate one hydrogen bond theek okay. hai so if that is the case then a such a type of hydrogen bonding is called as uh, cooperative hydrogen bonding well now let us consider this example you can see that this is a sugar molecule and you have got a hydroxyl group that is present over here now you can see that this hydroxyl group accepts two hydrogen bond theek okay. hai one hydrogen bond is accepted from this asn 232 and another hydrogen bond is accepted from this asn 205 right and since it has got its own hydrogen it can donate the hydrogen bond to glutamate protein so in this way a very complex network of the three hydrogen bonds that are formed we call such a type of hydrogen bonding network as cooperative hydrogen bonds when a hydroxyl group accept two hydrogen bonds and donate one hydrogen bond we say such a type of hydrogen bonds as 
cooperative hydrogen bonds quite really very simple well now to uh, well you can say agar aisa hona hai to it is necessary that the three amino acid residues must be separate of which two would act as donor and one would act as acceptor right well let us try to visualize this thing in uh, in our protein molecule now okay so here we go this is you know we have changed our molecule now we are no longer working with lysozyme let us uh, focus on a protein carbohydrate complex right so we have got this protein in complex with aminos right and if you move down this is the arabinose moiety okay well now what we want to do is that we want to visualize the cooperative hydrogen bonding network that is present in this protein and to do so kya karna padega aap log first uh, we would have to create a representation uh, that would uh, enable us to focus only on the arabinose group right to uske liye kya karte hain apan well let us select this arabinose first right by selecting that means if you click on this it will get selected right if it turns red that means it is selected and if you hit enter it will be shown okay and then you can uh, use this zoom center button to show that this is the arabinose right it is present in the famous chair confirmation or not okay so now let us try to see if any one of this hydroxyl that is shown over here if it is involved in cooperative hydrogen bond so iske liye apne ko kya karna padega what would be the second requirement now we want to focus or if we want to figure out how many amino acid residues might be there in its hydrogen bonding the network or hydrogen bonding capability or you can say hydrogen bonding range right so uh, the thing is that hydrogen bonds are standardized to exist at the distance of 3. Uh, maybe 3.5 angstrom right uske aage hydrogen bonding nahi hota hai right so well uh, what we will do now is that we would show only the residues that are in vicinity of 3.5 angstrom right so we would select it and how is that we show how many amino acid residues are there in 3.5 angstrom vicinity go to select then go to property or you can say numbers of selected residue okay and let us keep the value of 3.5 angstrom and hit okay theek okay. hai so now you can see that most of the amino acid residues that are present in vicinity of 3.5 angstroms are now selected now we want to show it therefore we will click on this show button okay and again zoom center right so now these are the amino acid residues that are present in 3.5 angstrom vicinity well, now let us label it okay right so now let us compute hydrogen bonds now do you see yes this is what i wanted to show this hydroxyl group is forming three hydrogen bonds as you can see one with asn232 another with glutamate 114 and another with this asn205 right asn232 asn205 and glutamate 14 okay so this is your hydrogen cooperative hydrogen okay 
Well, now there is different type of hydrogen bonds bonding pattern, something called as bidentate hydrogen bonding. So, bidentate hydrogen bonding me kya hoga? Two of the sugars will hydrogen bond with the same amino acid residue side chain. Right? That happens in case of ASN 232. There are two sugars that are involved with a single amino acid residue side chain hydrogen bonding. In the case, there was a single hydroxyl atom that was hydrogen bonded with different amino acid residues side chains as such. So, such a type of hydrogen bonding is called as bidentate hydrogen bond. Okay. Then the third type of hydrogen bonding that I have mentioned, that was something called as network of hydrogen bond that is mediated by water molecule. Okay. So now in order to visualize that, we would visualize water molecules as well. Okay, so scale here, what we need to do, let us close this thing now. Okay. And if we open the protein arabinose complex, now you can see that there are no water molecules, right? Well, the thing is that we need to do some settings in order to visualize these water molecules, right? So I will tell you first what those settings are. So you need to modify the loading preferences. Okay, go to this preferences, then loading protein. And then by default, this ignore solvent molecule is selected. What you need to do is to remove this selection so that whenever you load the molecule, if there are waters, then they would be present on this pen now. Okay. Then now, let us again load this protein. Okay. Now you can see that there are a lot of water molecules. Right? So this small red colored uh, spheres now represent your water molecules. Okay, now let us again create a view. What were we interested in? We were interested in our arabinose molecule. Let us select our arabinose molecule. Then uh, select uh, whatever residues that are present in the vicinity of 3.5 Armstrong. Right? Select the group that are present in vicinity of 3.5 Armstrong and hit OK. Show all those residues. Right? Now you can see, if I zoom center, two water molecules also appeared now. Right? And all we have to do is to now compute hydrogen bond and now you can see there is a very complex network of water mediated hydrogen bonds as well. These are called as bridged hydrogen bonds. And this water mediated hydrogen bonds are called as network of hydrogen bonds. Right. So now I hope I have introduced you with a concept of classification of hydrogen bonds as well. You can have cooperative hydrogen bonds, you can have bidentate hydrogen bonds, you can have water mediated network of hydrogen bonds, which might bridge a lot of hydrogen bonds as such. Okay. Ki, uh, your, uh, you can say, hmm. this residue, okay, ASN205, uh, Ah, sorry, threonine 147. Okay, if you can see that this threonine 147 do not directly engage hydrogen bond with the sugar molecule or arabinose molecule, right? It bridges the hydrogen bonding through this water molecule. 
water at position 310 right and in this way the bridging stabilization might also happen in protein ligand complexes sometimes right you can you can uh, when when we uh, when we didn't have this hydro uh, when we, when we didn't show this water molecule it might have appeared that uh, this threonine 147 uh, may never form hydrogen bond with your ligand molecule but that is not the case my friends the hydrogen bond is bridged via the water molecule that is present in vicinity of uh, this threonine 147 and thus this this such a type of uh, you can say network of hydrogen bonding plays a very significant role in stabilizing the protein structures. Okay, so I think uh, this will be enough for today, right? So I don't want to overdose you guys. Okay, I think I have passed my time. So the, the session is open for discussion now. Thank you so much, sir, for your uh, session and giving us your value uh, time from your business day. Sir? Okay. I think our participants will learn a lot. Now I request Ms. Malika Barua, lab assistant, to uh, end the meeting with her. Uh, formal vote of thanks. Thank you, Zakai. I would like to thank our resource person, Dr. Rohan Meshram sir, who honored this event with his inspirational talk. I would like to thank our coordinator, Samhita Das. And last but not the least, our below participants for making this event successful. Once again, I thank one and all present here. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir.